The, the shutdown itself, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect. It's going to delay some deals. Obviously, right. IPOs can't happen, and deals that you're trying to get through CFIUS approval and other approval, it could slow things down. Right. But, you know, ultimately, the government will but be open. Ask you, uh, given all of the quote unquote uncertainty that's out there right now, whether it be around China, uh, whether it be around Brexit, um, whether it be just around whether what the Fed's going to do and where the, where the stock market is and where valuations are, do you see this as a robust? M and A market right now. And we just had, well, then we just had two. We said so we had these two big uh, uh, healthcare deals in the past week. I actually think what usually affects uh, M and A is volatility. Uh, and if there's a lot of volatility in the market, big big swings, then I think M and A does get affected by that. Um, the fact it's affected that, how? Because I feel like some of the volatility helped these last deals. So like prices finally came down to, to places where people could actually make a move. Exactly right. It, it's, it's a question of. Um, where are things going to be settling out if there's wild swings every day? You, you're absolutely right. The fact that the stock prices have gone down have right. made deals, you know, maybe more likely, uh, some deals more likely to happen. What have the China tariffs done to cross border transactions, especially with Chinese companies? They're, they're not happening. It's I mean, done. You know, de deals that involve a Chinese company, very, you know, very difficult right. to do. But as far as overall activity, if you, if you look at if you look at 18 versus 17, there actually were almost exactly the same number of deals. Right. The reason the volume was up is there were just a lot of very large deals in 18. In fact, the first half of the year, a lot more larger deals in the second half. Of the year. And then the other question I was going to ask you is, given the quote unquote tech, tech lash that we keep hearing right. about in Silicon Valley, you know, how, how much of a ha uh, are they hamstrung, if you will, to do deals? So can Google buy anybody right now? You know, there was uh, speculation that Amazon might buy. Uh, some some of the uh, regional sports networks uh, that were going to come out of the Fox Disney could they buy could they do a deal like that in this environment? I think there would be you know some political aspects if so, if one of those guys tried to do large deals. But you have to remember they don't do a lot of deals. Amazon never did a deal of any size before Whole Foods. Uh, Apple really doesn't do any deals. The Beats deal was the biggest deal they ever did. So this concept that it may hold things back, they were never doing large deals. Right. So if there's one or two industries that, that we're going to look for major headlines, wake up in the morning and be talking about uh, on Squawk, what, what would be the industries you'd look for right now? Well, it's been pretty broad based if you look the last few years. Uh, probably there'd be some more healthcare and biotech on the heels of the Bristol Myers deal and the, uh, the deal that Lilly did. So I think somewhat in biotech, uh, there's more industrial consolidation, but those are, again, are smaller deals. Right. And then the other question was activists have been such a huge player in all of this. But it feels like activists did not do well last year. Well, it's interesting just from a couple of things. I said, as you guys know, on Squawk three years ago that if I could short the entire activist class, I would short it. Yeah. Because they basically run out of ideas. Ideas meaning companies that could get easily broken up or easily sold. So as an asset class, they've done really poorly. And if you look at, uh, if you look at what's happened, you know, Dan Loeb shows up at Campbell's, nothing's happened, stock's way down. Uh, Icon shows up with Xerox, scuttles the Fuji deal, nothing's happened. You know, we'll see what happens with Nielsen, we'll see what happens with Arconic, but those were at values way, way below. Now, having said that, I spend, I'm sure Eric does too, a lot of time uh, on, on activism because boards know that there's a high likelihood that they're going to have to face it, and so boards are preparing for it. Uh, they're, they're, you know, for want of a better word, they're becoming their own activists. They're figuring out what their vulnerabilities are. So I think overall for the capital right. markets, it's good. But, that, but as an asset class, they've just done very poorly. And then the other thing I wanted to ask you about was given the IPO market and potential volatility in the market, do you see some of the companies that say they want to go public in 2019, do they end up actually becoming M&A targets instead? Uh, I, I think that they might. I think that they might. Uh, if valuations stay down, uh, I think that's more likely because you know, the, the fact is that we, we do have a little bit of a lull in the high yield market, but that market will open up again. With valuations down generally, uh, by the way, I think there's going to be a lot of IPOs, but with valuations down generally, uh, when the financing markets open up again, it, it doesn't really matter what the rates are. And it doesn't really matter. It, it becomes a buy or be bought situation for some exactly. of these companies, too. And where's the private equity world right now? Just dormant? Well, private equity world the last few years has been selling everything they could, right. they could but sell. As a, as a buyer, though. They... they will be active buyers this year. I think they will be finally returning back. I also think we'll have a return to more go privates, public companies going private, because you can write very large checks now, $5, 10000000000 billion checks, 
And so if the market values stay down, I think that's a real possibility.